Hello everyone! Welcome back to our simple automation tutorials with Selenium in Java. Today we'll be diving into Selenium locators. In this tutorial we'll explore the different types of Selenium locators such as ID, class name, name, link text, partial link text, and tag name. This video is a part of the Udemy course Simple Automation Tests and Tutorials with Selenium Java. For more information, check the description below the video. Let's get started. Let's begin with the Selenium website. Here you can find information about the locator strategies and why we need them. Locators are ways to identify one or more specific elements in the DOM. While it might be obvious to some, others might have no idea what it means. Let's check the website. On the website testing101.net, we have created a form where you can practice using locators. Let's say I ask you to find the Submit button on the page. As a human, you can easily find it. It's a blue button labeled Submit. This is because you have eyes and can read. But what if we ask the exact same question to the computer program? Yes, our automation tool, even though it's currently simple, is an application. You already know that by using the driver get method, the application can navigate to the website. But what comes next? How can the application find the button you asked for? The application achieves this by using locators to identify elements in the DOM. What is DOM? If we go back to the website and right-click anywhere on the screen, we can find the last option in the menu, Inspect. Click on it and it will open a scary window for manual testers. This window is the Elements tab in the Chrome DevTools containing all the orange and blue HTML code with tags and attributes. You need to learn how to read this code, but in this tutorial we won't cover learning HTML as it would take too much time. Instead, we'll focus on a small piece of it that we need for locators. To get started, click on the arrow of the main Chrome DevTools menu located in the top left corner. This action will activate the selector mode, allowing you to point to the element of interest in the page. In our case, it's the Submit button. When you hover the mouse over the button, it will be highlighted and a tooltip with the CSS selector will be displayed. Simultaneously, the corresponding HTML in the DOM will be highlighted as well. This method enables us to find the HTML tags and attributes when we need to use them in automation. Let's take a closer look at it. So if you take a closer look, you'll find that it's not that scary. It's HTML, hypertext markup language. In the scope of our tutorial, we need to know two things. First, the tag, which always starts with the opening tag. In our case, it's the button tag starting with the button opening tag and ending with the button closing tag. Second, the attributes, which we'll mostly use as locators. These attributes are located inside the button opening tag and consist of a name value pair. For example, the name of the attribute is class and its value is button. There are many possible attributes, but in this tutorial we are interested in only a few – ID, name and class name. By using these three attributes, you can locate most of the elements on the page. Let's start with the ID attribute. IDs should be unique for each element on the page. To make it easier for you to follow the course, almost every lesson will have its own class. Therefore, we have created a new class called C Selenium Locators Test. In this class, we used to open Google Chrome method from the last lesson where we open Google Chrome in maximized mode and navigate to the Selenium Locators page on the testing101.net website. You can use this page to practice. Additionally, we added the code ThreadSleep, which pauses the test for one second. This helps visualize what is happening in the code, while the topic of weights will be covered a little later. Now we need to add the code to find the element. We will add it at the end, just before the driver quit method. The code is self-explanatory. We use the driver.findElementById method followed by the value of the element's ID attribute. It's pretty simple. The final version of the code will be available in the materials for the lecture. 
as we see, the word buy is in red color, which means we need to import the class. Click on the buy word or hover over and import the class. Next, we need to provide the value for the elements ID attribute, and for that, we need to visit the Testing 101 website. On the website, we have created a form that can be used to train in using Selenium locators. The form contains various input fields, drop-downs, checkboxes, and buttons, providing a variety of unique HTML tags and attributes. Moreover, the form is conveniently located at the top of the page, so you don't need to scroll to access the elements. Let's start with searching for the first field, the first name. To do that, right-click anywhere on the page and then select the Lux option in the context menu, Inspect. Clicking on it will open the Chrome DevTools on the Elements tab. To activate the selector, click on the arrow in the Chrome DevTools menu. This will enable the Expector mode. Now, as you hover the mouse over the web page, the elements will be highlighted, and you can see the area under the cursor representing the elements. In our case, we are interested in the first name input field. If you click on this element, you'll notice that the corresponding code in the Chrome DevTools is highlighted. It starts with the opening input tag, and the name attribute value is first name. Now we need the next attribute, the ID. It will be a long, unique text. Copy it for further use. Go back to IntelliJ IDEA and paste the copied ID into the double quotes after the by ID code. In the end, it should look like this. Now we can run the code by clicking on the play button. The Google Chrome window will open, display for one second, and then close. The console of IntelliJ IDEA will be displayed, where you can find the information that one test has passed. This indicates that the element was successfully found. As beginners, we often need more visualization to ensure that the code is actually running and performing as intended. To achieve this, we will add the click method, which will click on the found element. And we will also add a wait for a couple of seconds to see that the click action happened. Now, let's run the code again. The Selenium Locators page will open once more, and after one second, you will notice that the cursor is displayed in the first name field. After five seconds, the browser will close, and once again, you can see that the test has passed. But now, you have actually witnessed it happening. In a separate video, we will discuss the pros and cons of using different types of locators. However, in this tutorial, we'll focus on demonstrating how to use them. Let's learn about the name locator. Similar to the ID locator, the name locator uses the name attribute of an element to locate it. The name attribute can be shared among multiple elements, so this locator might return a list of elements. However, we have designed the UI form in such a way that the elements are unique, making it easier for us to learn each locator. Now, let's go to the IntelliJ IDEA. We need to add the line of code between the ID locator and the driver quit method. This line of code is exactly the same as finding the element by ID. Additionally, we'll add the click method and wait for 5 seconds to visualize the element being found. To find the name of the element, let's use the last name field. Activate the inspector as we did before and hover the cursor over the last name field. Click on it and the input HTML tag will be highlighted. We can see the name attribute and its value, last name. Copy it and put it into the double quotes of the find element by name method. Now run the code. Once the code runs, you will see that the cursor appears in the first name field. After a 5 second wait, the cursor moves to the last name field. The element was successfully found by the name attribute. Let's check the next one, the class name locator. It uses the class attribute of the element to locate it. Similarly to the name locator, multiple elements can have the same class, so this locator may return multiple elements. However, as we mentioned before, we designed the UI form in a way that ensures the elements are unique. This makes it easier for us to learn each locator. Now, let's go back to IntelliJ IDEA and add two more lines of code. The code is similar to the ID and name attributes. The difference is that the locator consists of two words, class name. 
On the UI, we have a checkbox that has a unique class name value. The Terms and Conditions checkbox. Inspect it with the Chrome DevTools selector and find a set of letters that form a unique class name for the checkbox. This input tag doesn't have the ID attribute, but it has a unique class. Copy it and paste it between the double quotes of the class name selector in the code. Now we can run the code again. This time, I commented out the ID and name selectors. Once the code is run in one second, you'll see that the checkbox is checked. It means that the checkbox element was successfully found by the class name selector and clicked. Let's learn about one more simple locator. The tag name locator uses the HTML tag name to locate elements. However, it's mostly not unique, so it's often used in combination with other attribute selectors like class names or others. In next tutorial, we'll learn how to use multiple selectors effectively. Now, let's go to IntelliJ IDEA and add the line of code for the tag name locator. It's very similar to other locators, so you won't encounter any troubles with it. On the UI, we added a unique element that has a distinctive tag on the page, the drop-down. If you inspect it with Chrome Selector, you'll notice the first word in the angle brackets, which is the opening tag, select. Copy it and paste it into the tag name locator. To speed up the run, we have commented out all other locators. Now we can run the code. The website page will be opened and you will see how the drop-down is expanded with two options. This indicates that the element was successfully identified and clicked using the tag name locator. We have two more locators to cover. Let's check the link text locator. If the element we want to locate is a link, we can use the link text locator to identify it on the web page. The link text is the text displayed on the link. When we browse websites, we often click on the links that open other pages, lead to product details or take us through other journeys. Most of these elements have labels in the form of text that we humans can read and click. The link text locator works in the same way. Let's add the find element by link text method to our class. The syntax is similar to the previous locators. Then, let's find the link for the form, which we added as the Terms and Conditions link. If you inspect it with the Chrome DevTools, you will find the A tag, which represents the link tag. As you see, the HTML is quite complex, and the tag itself doesn't have the text of the label. The text Terms and Conditions is hidden in other tags. Please copy it and paste it into the Find Element by Link Text method, then run the code. The website page will be opened, and this time the click won't be visible. Instead, you will see how the page scrolled down to the description of the link text locator. This is because we made it an internal link that leads to another element on the same page, rather than redirecting to a different page. Let's learn about the last locator in this tutorial. The last locator we'll learn about is the partial link text locator. As the name suggests, you can search for a link by any character, phrase, or word in the link, instead of using the full text. Let's go to the IntelliJ IDEA and add the new method. Find element by partial link text. We will use the same terms and conditions link, but this time we will search with just one word, instead of the full text. For example, let's search for the word terms. If the button label or the link text is cropped due to space limitations or to display what is returned from the backend, using partial link text allows us to locate the link effectively. In the code, we just put the search word terms in double quotes. Now run the code, and the behavior will be exactly the same. The web page will open and then you will be scrolled down to the link text locator explanation on the page. As we mentioned, the partial link text works with any part of the text. You don't need to specify the first word. You can search by any part of the text available in the DOM. And this marks the end of our tutorial on Selenium locators related to tags and attributes. We have learned how to write a simple find element method for ID, name, class name, tag name, and links. In our next lecture, we will delve into how to identify elements on the page using CSS selectors. 
The final code will be available in the lecture materials and on our website testing101.net. I hope to see you in the next video.